Star Citizen Alpha 3.19 has a whole slew of fixes, updates and evolutions planned for mining gameplay. This update is planned to hit the live servers before Fleet Week at the end of May. That might mean that 3.18 has quite a short patch cycle, but 3.19 is written with the same code and isn't really branched off, so it's effectively a 3.18.x patch anyway. Anyway, I digress. Mining hasn't seen updates for a while. After they introduced mining gadgets a little while ago, they were sort of happy with the state that mining was in, having that additional gameplay of being able to attach a mining gadget to a rock and then have it aid you in the mining process, enabling players to mine more difficult rocks solo effectively. There's obviously refining as well, which takes those materials and then you can refine them into more valuable materials. So the mining sort of gameplay loop is pretty refined. The most refined gameplay loop we have in Star Citizen, but Cloud and PM are trying to push mining to the next level and start to get some of the game's economy future-proofed for things like long-range hauling, crafting, and the dynamic economy, etc. Cloud and PM want to have a higher ceiling, sort of higher difficulty ceiling, for expert miners so that they are challenged and get rewarded. 3.19 will also have a balance, a general balance pass to all mining related items, heads, gadgets, sub items, consumables, the actual mineables themselves. Um, it will be much clearer what the positives and negatives of using particular gear and consumables are when you're mining. All the mineables now have much more variance in their resistance and stability, etc., based on the actual um, composition. So the different items you use and outload yourself with will be directly related to the type of ore you want to extract. Aluminium, that will be best suited for one set of gear. Iron for another. And iron deposits have been added to the game too. They are a ship exclusive mineable, at least for now. There are some other new mineables too. Uh, Genolite, which is exclusively found in caves and only mineable in FPS via multi-tool mining attachments. It's worth quite a bit as well, sort of like a gold nugget. Um, so something that if you see and you've got a, a ability to um, mine it, you'll want to do that. Uh, this is to encourage players to actually get involved with the hand-based mining mechanics because a lot of people just weren't doing it. They cleaned up and changed the way resources are distributed around the verse. This is partly to make future iterations and mechanics more just future-proof. Deeper crafting is being planned as well. So obviously we've got the very early version of crafting in the back of salvage ships um, in the dispensers there um, so that you can do a bit of hull scraping and then you're able to turn those salvage materials into multi-tools and multi-tool bits. But it sounds like that crafting is going to be a lot more diverse. It looks like we can expect to be able to use different types of materials that we find from mining in the crafting process in the future. There will be exclusive or very sort of um, specific zones where rare materials will uh, spawn or be available that will drive players to have conflict over them or to um, go there for risk reward or just to generally sort of have the economy um, being pushed around. They want players to have some idea of where to get a material from. So there are going to be standard materials now with 3.19, like copper and iron, um, something that's basic and used in a lot of processes. It's not necessarily rare, um, but is, yeah, it, it is commonly available, but might only be in a particular distinct location or mostly available at a distinct location. So in Stanton, for example, aluminium is commonly going to be found around Crusader. Copper, that's going to commonly be found around the Microtech area of space. So though the exact materials and where they are might change, so they might go, well, actually, copper's around Crusader instead or whatever, you do have chances of finding these materials elsewhere in Stanton, like in asteroid belts, which have a very diverse range of materials. But yeah, if you wanted a load of aluminium, you'd go to Crusader and you'd be able to get loads of it. It also appears that certain types of rare ore are going to be more likely to spawn in different types of standard materials. So you might have higher chances of finding laronite in iron or copper might have a higher chance of finding uh, bexalite. In the future, some star systems might have exclusive materials or at least high concentrations of very rare materials that you will require for crafting some items, as I was sort of talking about earlier. They want mining to be more easily accessed by new players as well. So they do want a higher skill ceiling, but they also want mining to be easily accessible to new players. So they've improved the mining UI. They have sort of tried to pair related systems on the UI. So at a glance, you can more easily control your mining laser. They've also cleared up the center part of the HUD by moving items away to sort of um, try to clutter it a little bit less. Scanning 
has been improved to be less intrusive. Everything is more readable as well. You will much more readily be able to work out if a rock is mineable with your setup at a glance. There's an indicator for if a rock will be easy to impossible to mine. Cloud Imperium are also improving multi-crew mining. They want rocks that can't be mined unless players work together, and they want to encourage the use of the mole, that multi-crew miner that isn't really used so much as multiple prospectors are. So the mole will be able to synchronize its mining lasers now, drastically decreasing the instability of a rock. So all of the crew can mine it together, and it's gonna be a lot easier for them to do that. However, like three prospectors mining the same rock, they would have an incredibly high instability as they're not synced. It's still doable, but it's more of an expert level thing. So you should find that the mole is able to mine a deposit, especially a harder deposit, much more quickly and easier than before, or at least comparatively to prospectors in the new patch. So each resource in the actual mineable will affect its composition and its weight, and mass, and heavier materials will be harder to crack. They are tweaking the economy and values of materials too. If you want um, sort of to um, make a quick buck, you could get copper, which is more readily available around Microtech, and then take that to Arc Corp, where you could sell it, where it's not so readily available. Um, you might make a lot of money from doing that. Obviously, it's a very small universe at the moment, so bear that in mind. But in the future that will be scaled up so that you would be moving sort of materials from one star system to another to um, star systems that don't necessarily have access to those materials normally and then you can make a lot more money so easier accessibility higher ceiling of difficulty more potential value gameplay out of each of the types of mining and reasons to use the mole a lot more sort of a refined gameplay experience um sounds like is what we're going to be getting with 3.19 as well now i think that this is all part of clan imperium also looking at evolving cargo decks, the cargo refactor, having persistent sort of habs and persistent hangers, having much more sort of physicalized cargo, having um, deeper crafting. We sort of know that there's going to be simulated factory nodes for Star Citizen, so the, the reason that a particular uh, area will buy iron off me is because they want to use iron in a process, and it might be to be making particular types of component or whatever, and then the back-end economy will actually make those components and then they can be moved on somewhere else to stock a shop. But the crafting that looks like it's going to be in players' hands, we're not sure to what extent we're going to be able to craft things. What exactly are we going to be able to craft? Will it be, well, a whole range of FPS gear? What about being able to make our own um, sort of uh, weapons for ships and components. What about munitions? Will we be able to craft whole ships? I'm very excited to see the direction that Cloud Imperium go. I don't want it to be super complicated or anything like that. I do want it to be gamified systems. I do want it to be fun more than anything else. But I love a good bit of crafting in a game. And Cloud Imperium don't really want a player-led economy. They do want it sort of simulated economy where there are effectively 10 NPCs for every one player. And um, the players, yeah, they can affect the economy, but they're not 100% um, leading it. Anyway, I'm really interested to know what you think. Are you excited for these sort of changes and updates for mining in 3.19? Do you like the fact that Clan Imperium are starting to look at some of these more economic factors and evolving some of the already relatively refined gameplay to a better standard? Do you think this heralds changes to the dynamic economy too coming soon? Are there any bits that you would have preferred them to also add at this time or stuff that you didn't like about the mining updates they've been talking about there? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Time for some shilling. The Toby Eye Tracker 5 is on sale again until the 6th of March. This gives you native high precision head and eye tracking in Star Citizen. Very cool for general immersion, for combat both in ship or on foot. They are absolutely fantastic pieces of kit and both Zin and I have one. Use the links below to grab one for 15% off or to find out more. That's the last Chevron locked in, Mr. Daniel Jackson, who is legally distinct from any doctors of the same name. We've done it. We've connected to another world. Daniel Jackson, we're being hacked through the gates to the stars, which is also legally distinct from any other gates that travel to the stars. We should have got NordVPN, Daniel Jackson. We would have been able to browse the internet safely, access our favorite content on Netflix, and we would have been able to have privacy. We would have had less of these Egyptian-looking snake people attacking us too. You should check out nordvpn.com slash boardgamer and get yourself a great deal on NordVPN. Just click the link in the comments section below.
Every month we have a ship giveaway. For February, it's for a Crusader Spirit C1, the very cool looking multi crew, multi role competitor to the Cutlass Black and Freelancer. As it's a concept ship, you'll get a Cutlass Black until it's made flyable. You'll get lifetime insurance with the ship and a game package for Star Citizen 2. So all you need to play. Just comment on any of my videos made during the month to be in for a chance of winning that. If you would like to further support the channel, then consider becoming a Patreon or using that join button under my YouTube videos to become a channel member. It goes a massive way to helping us make videos every day and you'll get some exclusive content from me and Zinya from time to time too. Become a board gamer today.